<laughs> I don't know how well you can hear me because I think I'm echoing in here, so I may have to do some changes and make some adjustments. But praise the Lord, I wanted to take a moment to kind of give you an update on what's going on with the ministry. Is that we moved, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. Have you ever been in one of those places where God just blesses you in such a way that you just go, you almost feel guilty about it. It's like, no, 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 that's too good. No, 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 that, that's just too good. You just can't contain it. It's so good. You're just totally amazed and you walk around with your mouth hanging open. Wow. <laughs> that's the way my wife and I feel about moving into our new apartment is that we were in a pretty nice apartment actually and it was good while we were there and I have nothing really bad to say about it it just was a challenge because of the place that it was and it was newer and you know it had like the fireplace and you know little cathedral ceilings and things but then God kind of spoke to me and said you know it's time to move you know it's time to move on as it were and when we were recording on the porch, you know, it was kind of like a small porch and there wasn't much room and people were watching and it was always kind of challenging for them because they always wondered, I'm sure, what was going on. And they never asked, you know, I would have told them if they were interested, but for the most part, it was just a little bit not quite as homey or peaceful as God wanted for us. And so when it came time to look for a place, I prayed. You know, I said, Lord, you know, we need a place. It's obvious, you know, and you've told me to move on, so this weekend we want to find a place. And as some of you know, because you prayed with me, was that we had determined that weekend to find one. And this was my first choice, the one that we're in. <laughs> and so we prayed about it and kind of looked at the schematics, you know, and the drawings, and we Googled it on map, you know, Google Map looked at the area, you know, and kind of went, you know, man, increasing our square footage sounded wonderful because we wanted to go from a one-bedroom to a two-bedroom so we'd have an office for the ministry. And uh, I was kind of excited about that part because we laid out step-by-step step everything that we wanted to do before the Lord. And as we did, He seemed to confirm those things that we wanted. And as we stepped forward, we took each individual step prayerfully, carefully, very carefully. And my wife was amazed to see how it came through. And step by step it happened. So today we wound up actually over the weekend moving in early. And we, who, you know, aren't planning on officially moving until the 17th when we move the last of our, well, the 11th when we move the last of our stuff in. We're going to have some. Christian friends come over and help move couches and beds and things like that, but we started moving in our little things, you know, things that were loose that weren't in boxes, and boy, do we have a lot of boxes. So as we kind of started to move in, we got more excited about it, so we decided to move in. <laughs> wow, it's just amazing. I wish I could show you or tell you what it's like because it's just a wonderful place that God has provided. There's a huge porch that's probably triple the size of what most people have in their houses. It's got a deck that's as big as a house's deck plus a whole side deck for an apartment. <laughs> it's got big giant bedrooms and one huge room that we're using for the office is a bedroom. It sits right off the porch with a giant sliding glass door it's just amazing. And then what amazed me more was as we kept coming over, we kept experiencing this feeling of peace. It was like the other building had had a fire and you know they remodeled it and it was brand new technically. It had been done, you know, kind of questionable some of the work, but it looked brand new and it acted brand new. It was kind of fun, but this place is older and it's been kind of, it's got that feeling of, I don't even know how to express it to you, but contentment of peace. And praise the Lord, 
God knows what we all need in our lives. He knows where He wants to take us if we would just yield our choices to Him. And as we have done, I pray you might do too. And you may find that just like Jacob discovered at Bethel that he was surprised to find that God was there. When we got here, it was such an amazing feeling because we were excited about the room and the space. And that was important you know, to me was to be able to have space. But I've always been able to live just about anywhere, whether a tent or a mansion, whether an apartment or a house. You know, I've always found that no matter where I went, as long as God was with me, I could make it work no matter what it was, whether it even lived in a car or under a bridge. Because in all the circumstances as a missionary, I've been in a lot of different varieties of experiences, and God has always been there to make it comfortable for me, whether it be as humorous as it is making cardboard boxes into you know shelving and making that into, you know, for your dresser closets, you know, out of cardboard, or whether it be buying, you know, bookcases and making a library somewhere, doing all kinds of things. God has allowed me the privilege and the enjoyment of being able to adapt anywhere I went. But I've never walked into a place where I just went, ah, and started to say, like, home. Now, obviously, this isn't home. We're passing through, and, you know, it is in time, so we're all going to, you know, see the end of the world. But for now, it was like God wanted to give me a place of peace, a place that I could be still and know Him in a more intimate and personal way. And I pray that God is doing that for you because He doesn't want us to be consumed by the things that are coming upon the world, but he wants us to be taking that with which he's given us and thanking him for the life that we've lived and the life that we're enjoying and the part of him that is provided for us because he loves us so much. So I wanted to share that thought with you because I think our ministry is turning, you know, it's changing its focus. You know, it's like we all have Google if you're on the internet. You can Google anything and find out facts. What you do with facts will determine whether you become wise or foolish. If you become wise, that means you've learned how to take the facts and identify those things that are true according to the Word of God. And when you do that, then you make yourself more knowledgeable about those things that may not be factual as well as those things that are factual. And so you won't be deceived or misled in these latter days. And I think our ministry now is turning towards not so consumed about worrying about what other people are doing, but sharing with you the facts over the fallacies. Sharing with you certain things that you can learn and apply to your life. You know, certain truths that you can make real for you. I know that when I found a huge teaching on Hebrews for Christians that um, about fallacy, I was amazed because it had nothing to do really with the website, but it was all about the logic and the understanding of how to debate or how to discuss things in an intelligent way. And we're going to go ahead and do that in this ministry. We're going to take some videos and explore that option. You know, that God has given us as far as wisdom is concerned, knowledge. You know, we all have, as it were, a portion of faith that we're given. And then we increase that by hearing the Word of God and applying it to our lives. But there's also things that aren't necessarily so beneficial to us. Sometimes things distract us or get us off target when we really want to be focused in on what Jesus is doing in our own life, as well as maybe in the lives of others. I know today I just saw something that was really amazing to me that I wanted to investigate, be a part of. And so I'm going to take some time to do that. But I also wanted to share about this week, Vidivo, Vidivo, or however you want to say it, 
I always say videos, because they're video devotionals, is probably going to be not so many of them, or maybe not as many as normal, because we're still moving, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm whipped. I moved, gosh, I don't know, we must have made nine carloads, you know, moving just furniture, well, furniture boxes and loose stuff and things that we needed just to get by over here to the apartment. We call it our house, Bethel. And uh, with me, I mean, because we went, we're upstairs, you know, so we had to go up, down, up, down, up, downstairs, you know, because we live in upstairs. So we had to go downstairs, loaded in the car, over here, upstairs, unloaded. You know, some of you that uh, have done this a lot, you know what I mean. <laughs> you accumulate things after a while. And uh, now it's funny because when we spread out, you know, we've got so much room that uh, spreading out is wonderful that I'm glad that we never got rid of all of our things and we kept them because they seem to fit. And God does that with life. He'll take your experiences and make them fit as you choose to walk with Him. So don't, don't be surprised if you might go through something you don't understand at some point in time because down the road, He'll make it fit for you. Well, it's not much more I can say except my wife Lori is very happy. There's adjustments we're making you know, to get stuff so that we can kind of like deal with this week before we get everything moved in. But boy, are we happy. It just is so peaceful. So nice. So like shalom. A peace that passes all understanding. So like our God to give us a place that we could, even as huge as this living room is, let me tell you, this room is so big. <laughs> How big is it? It's something like 16 or 18 by 13, maybe a little bigger, with a giant sliding glass door that opens up to the deck that's like 20 feet long on one side or more. You know, and then at the end of the big open space, you know, and this is all upstairs. Man, I mean, I've got it made. <laughs> so I said, Lord, whatever you want to do, you want to do a Bible study? We're all for it. You want to open up the home to the Cape Landing Library? We're all for it. Or whatever nowadays it would be. But whatever you choose to do, Lord, this is your home. And you know, I want to make an invitation to you. If you ever want to visit, if you ever want to find out what goes on you know, in my life, really, if you want to come over and say hi, I offer that to you as an open invitation. Whoever you are, you can come over and visit. I live in Sacramento. And, you, know, you can come and see what we do here and how we do it and how very unprofessional we do it so that the professionals aren't intimidated. <laughs> just kidding. But that we want to make it so that everyone else would do something as God leads them. And because it's free, we don't choose to go way out of our way to buy expensive cameras and sound systems and sets and lights. But God has used just the simple things, the foolish things of the world, sometimes to confound the wise when it comes to how did he get so much done in so short amount of time on the internet when most people pay huge amounts of money for advertising and websites and blogs and all this stuff and we've done everything free. Freely receive, freely give. So sharing the joy that I have this morning and exhaustion and I am very tired and the peace I wanted to bless you today and say Come if you want to. Visit if you choose to. Be a part of our life if you want to pray for us. And then if you'd like to, share the videos. Share them with anyone you want to. Do with them what you like. They're the Lord's and it always was God's ministry from the beginning. And it always will be. Because Jesus has something special in store for you. And my whole point in starting all this was to let you know that Jesus will speak to you daily. He will reveal Himself to you personally 
He will make himself audibly known to you if you choose to pursue him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. It's really not about being special. It's about who he is and what he's done. So, for the next few days, maybe we won't have all the intros and everything else going, you know, to start with. And maybe we might be some remodeling going on, and maybe we won't have that many videos out. But just being mindful that whatever God has in store, man, if this is just a taste of the beginning and how peaceful it is, and it's winter right now, and I'm sitting on a porch looking at sunshine, enjoying the weather. God's got something in store for you. He's got something in store for me. And I can't wait to find out what it is. Can you?